escaped after I bumped into a student in the hallway. Oh no, your leg is bleeding. Let me help you up. Don't touch me. She scowled and hugged her injured leg after the painful collision. I tried to get closer to her, but I just want to help. Leave! She pushed my hand away and opened her phone. Hey, bestie, I just fell in the hallway. A moment later, her friend came. They helped each other out of there after throwing a dirty look at me. What's going on? Then, Mr. Henry, my teacher, kindly took me into the class. Everyone, this is Lim, our new student. Lim, can you please introduce yourself? I started to feel nervous in front of so many people. He hello, everyone. I'm Lim. My family and I used to live in New York, but due to some circumstances, we have to move here. I hope we can get along well. The classroom became oddly quiet. Dozens of pairs of eyes were focusing on me. Mr. Henry spoke up. Come on, guys. Let's give her a round of applause, shall we? A few claps were heard, but they were still looking at me with discomfort. Did I do something wrong? After school, when I was walking in the hallway, suddenly, cold water poured all over my head. Startled, I dropped the books in my hands. My clothes were soaked and stained with dye. Someone from upstairs had poured shaved ice here upon me, but they had disappeared. What the hell? At that moment, Zeb, one of my classmates, showed up. He gave me a handkerchief and helped me pick up the books. Use this to wipe off the ice. I hurriedly talked to him. Our class is a bit strange, isn't it? They don't seem very friendly. A group of boys suddenly passed by, glancing at us with weird eyes. Zev startled, shoved the pile of books into my hand and grumbled. Don't try to be friendly with me. Just stay away. Then, he hurriedly left but I tried to follow him out of curiosity. Wait! What's going on? Zev scaredly looked around, then quickly shoved a piece of paper into my hand. And in the blink of an eye, he vanished. In the paper, there was a single line. Don't trust anyone. Hmm, weirdo. The next morning, I was greeted by a surprise gift box in my locker with a card. Welcome new student. Hmm, wow, so my new classmates didn't seem too bad after all. I was happily holding the gift box when Seth appeared out of nowhere and snatched it. I was happily holding the gift box when Zev appeared out of nowhere and snatched it. Don't open it. Throw it away. I angrily grabbed it back and stuffed it in my closet. Why? That's my gift. I will open it later. At the end of class, when I was walking through the hallway, I saw Burke, a notorious douchebag at school and his minions cornering Zev near the stairs. Don't ruin the fun. If you interfere, we'll end you. But is it necessary to do so? Berg rubbed Sev's collar and was about to punch him when suddenly my phone rang. All of them turned their scary gazes on me. I frantically turned it off and fled. Because I didn't notice, I ran so quickly that I bumped into a student causing her to fall to the ground. She was in so much pain that she couldn't stand up. Her leg was even bleeding. But when I offered to help her, she just bluntly refused and even pretended I didn't exist. She called her friend for help, and they left me standing dumbfoundedly there. Ugh. Seriously? What the hell is wrong with this school? That night, I excitedly opened the gift <laughs> box, hoping it'd somehow fix my horrible day. But no! As soon as the lid of the box was opened, several frogs jumped out! I screamed loudly in fear! So, this is why Zevs warned me. What more does he know that I don't? The next morning, I hurriedly looked for Zev. But when I saw him in class, I was surprised when his face and arms were covered with bruises. 
gosh. I felt so guilty. I should have stopped work yesterday. I asked Zev apologetically. Are you okay? But he didn't answer and just coldly turned away. Then, Burke suddenly came to me with a friendly smile. Hey, new face. Sorry about yesterday. We sent you the wrong gift by mistake, so you must be scared. It was meant for someone else. We'd like to make it up to you with a welcome party. Burke handed me a party invitation. Hmm, I was skeptical, but I didn't want to miss out on a chance to mingle with everyone. Maybe just one more time. But unfortunately, I was tricked again. The party location was just a dark, empty lot. When I was there, my foot got caught in a rope, causing a paint bucket on a tree about to fall right to my head. Once again, Zev appeared at the right time. He hugged me and used his body to black the paint bucket. Zev screamed breathlessly. Damn bass. Burke set up another trap to make fun of you and you walked right into it again? Why do they keep doing it to me? From behind, <laughs> Burke and his friends laughed maliciously. Ha! Huh, cause you privileged city wonker deserve it! Do you remember what you said on your first day? Yeah, that had to move. Oh, we're so sorry that New York girl is disappointed in moving to our hometown then. I'll help send you back in an ambulance. He raised his fist to punch me and Zeb, but accidentally, his elbow hit one of the guys behind him. The unlucky feller fell to the ground and passed out. Wow, I know it wasn't the right time, but I wanted to laugh so bad. Behind Burke's fierce and ferocity, he was surprisingly clumsy. Burke and his friends became panicked. Oh fudge, Dean, is he dead? Oh shoot! I tried to calm them down. Hey, relax. I can give him first aid. My father is a doctor, so I was taught first aid skills from a young age. I never thought it'd become so helpful in such a strange situation. Thanks, Dad. I quickly gave first aid to Dean. Then, helped them take him to the hospital. After Dean regained consciousness, Burke and he looked at me awkwardly. Dean thanked me. While Burke stood silently, I spoke up. Hey, I never meant to look down on your town. And if it sounded like that, I'm sorry. Like, come on, the air is so fresh here and the, and the food is good. Oh, what do you hate? I smiled and held out of my hand in front of Burke. And despite your weird behavior at school, I kind of want to live here for long. So, peace? He grumbled but took my hand. Our handshake solved it all. Zev and I soon became close friends. With the help of Zev and the luck of bullying from Burke, my school life has become so much better. When I was lying in bed, my sister suddenly spilled a bottle of milk and cereal on me. <gasps> what the heck are you doing? Although I was screaming, she still live-streamed the whole scene. Follow my channel to see more videos of me trolling my sister. You pay for this! After saying that, I immediately beat her up. And so, our fight scene was broadcast live online. Hi, I'm Peach. Two years ago, my sister Sika and I founded a YouTube channel called Carney Sisters to share tips about fashion and beauty. I took charge of filming and coming up with ideas. Sika was the one who appeared on the screen. At first, everything went very well. Our channel grew extremely fast. But then things started to change when Sika wanted to make more money by taking ads from unknown cosmetic brands and performing stupid challenges to attract viewers. I wasn't happy with that at all. We ended up quarreling all the time. After learning that Sika and I had a fight in a livestream, my parents were furious. Dad even cancelled my trip with my friends and didn't allow me to use the internet for a while. Not only that, that fighting video became a hot topic at our school. We were constantly made fun of. The scene when I pulled my sister's hair even became the most used meme for weeks afterward. And what's worse is my scholarship application was badly affected. The university I applied for felt concerned after seeing my fight video. They wanted more time to evaluate me. 
Contrary to how tragic it was to me, CK enjoyed it as a victory. She gloated every time someone commented or shared that video. Stop being stupid, Sika. You are stupid. The success of our channel is based on my popularity. A loser like you can't contribute anything. We realized that we couldn't work with each other anymore. However, we also didn't want the other to have that channel. Finally, after a heated argument, Sika made a proposal. Fine, if you prove yourself better than me, I'll give you that channel. How? I'll choose the most unattractive guy in school to be your partner. With your fashion sense, you must both become the king and queen at the school prom. Serious, I quickly agreed to that. We also signed a contract together as evidence. The next morning, Sika and I sat in the cafeteria and searched for the most unattractive guy. After listing all the names, she finally pointed to the corner of the room where a guy with a cranky face and sloppy clothes was sitting. Perfect! He'll be your partner! No way! I knew him. That's Beavis, an antisocial guy who was always scowling and annoyed. And his fashion sense sucks, making him king. Ugh. I tried to convince Sika to change her mind, but she refused. Then say goodbye to the YouTube channel. Although I knew that making Beavis the prom king was impossible, I couldn't let my sister have the YouTube channel that I built so hard. Therefore, I must try my best. At lunchtime that day, I put on a beautiful outfit and approached Beavis as friendly as possible. Hi, Beavis. Can I sit with- Nope. What? Cat here, well, doll. I have no reason to talk to you. He casually took the tray of food and left. What? So rude! My cheeks flushed with anger and I immediately chased after him to give him a piece of my mind. But suddenly, Sika, who was sitting near there, tripped me. My whole body fell forward just as Beavis turned around and his whole tray of food fell on top of me. Everyone in the cafeteria burst into laughter when they saw that scene. I helplessly looked at Beavis, asking for help but he just raised his eyebrows slightly in surprise. In the end, he just coldly left. The next day, I secretly followed Beavis to know what kind of person he really is. After a while of walking on the streets, he suddenly entered the hospital. Out of curiosity, I followed. However, when I got to the ward, the receptionist kept me because visiting hours were over. Quickly, I snuck inside a changing room nearby, put on a janitor's uniform, and easily entered the ward. While I was searching, a male nurse called me. You! Come here quickly, I need a janitor urgently. Oh, I had no choice but to follow him. He led me into a room where a little girl was screaming and throwing food everywhere. Unfortunately, the nurse left soon after because of an urgency, leaving me alone with that girl. Come on, kiddo. Anger doesn't solve anything. Do you want to talk it out? I don't want to continue treatment anymore. It makes me lose my hair. I'm ugly. The little girl kept screaming and crying. Feeling bad for her, I lifted my shirt up, showing her the scar on my stomach. It's the result of a surgery. Even though it's ugly, I love it. The scar reminded me of how strong I was. Don't worry, kiddo. Your hair will grow back. After a while, she finally calmed down. Calling herself Sunny, she told me that she had lung cancer. A few months ago, her condition worsened and she was admitted to the hospital. We were having a nice chat when suddenly, Beavis appeared. Turns out, Sunny is his sister. After taking her away, Beavis and I sat down together. He shyly spoke up. Thanks for helping my sister. Then he started sharing his story. His dad died in an accident a few years ago, and his sister became terminally ill. As bad things kept happening, he began to lose faith in life and became hostile to everyone. As I understood more about Beavis, I realized he wasn't as mean as he looked. Since then, Beavis and I have talked more and become closer. I really want his life to get better. I asked Sika to end the contract, but she no. refused and even called me a loser. Furiously, I told her, Fine, you'll see. That day, I decided to help Beavis change his gloomy look. After Sunny and I worked together to persuade him, he finally agreed. We went shopping together and tried on many clothes. Unexpectedly, Beavis has cute sides too. Later that day, on our way home, he shyly asked, Do you mm, want to go to the prom with me? Needless <laughs> to say, I agreed. 
That day, I couldn't stop thinking about him. On the day of the prom, just as I expected, the principal stood on the stage and named Beavis and I the king and queen of this year's prom. Before I could share that joy with him, he suddenly mm -hmm. looked coldly at me. So now I'm useless to you, right? What? You don't have to pretend anymore. Yesterday, Sika told me about your contract, using me to achieve your goal. Are you happy? Even though I tried to explain, Beavis just left with disappointment. I know I should have been happy to get the channel back from my sister, but what happened to Beavis left me devastated. I had hurt him. Right after that, I went to see Sika. You won! The YouTube channel is yours! I don't need it anymore! What I need are my loved ones! And of course, that includes you! I sighed and left. Sika was utterly surprised. In the days that followed, I locked myself in my room and contacted no one. What just happened made me feel so depressed. But then one morning, I unexpectedly saw Beavis standing in front of my house. Hi, I'm Beavis. Can we get to know each other? Beavis said as he extended his hand towards me. What are you doing? I was surprised, but he just smiled. <laughs> we got off to a bad start. Do you want to start over? As it turned out, Sika felt apologetic, so she looked for Beavis to explain everything and convinced him to make up with me. After knowing the truth, Beavis decided to give us a chance to start over. I smiled <laughs> happily at him. At that moment, all misunderstandings between us were cleared. I'm so glad everything is going well now. Beavis and I have gradually become closer, and Sika has reduced her interest in popularity. We made up with each other and decided that the YouTube channel Carney Sisters would still have both of us. It's great, isn't it? I was walking down the hallway when suddenly a girl kicked me in the butt. I turned around and yelled in anger. What on earth is wrong with you? <laughs> Didn't you write it on your back? Surprised, I touched my back and realized there was a piece of paper on it. The words kick me were clearly written there. What the heck? I looked around to find the culprit and saw my brother hiding in a corner, holding his stomach and laughing. Oh, I knew it right away. It was another one of his stupid pranks. Oh, dang it. Every time I talk about my twin brother, Loki, my whole body trembles with anger. I know, what a weird name, right? But it suits him so well, and it was really a torture having to live with him. Loki was always pulling pranks on everyone around him, and instead of making people laugh, he only brought discomfort and embarrassment. He even ignored all of my advice and said, Come on, don't be so serious, Layla, it's just a joke. Jeez, I hated my troublesome brother. For people like him, April Fool's Day is like a national day. He was always preparing the most outlandish pranks for it, and I am not exaggerating. Last year, somehow, Loki tricked his ex-bestie, Rich, into changing clothes in the girls' restroom. Then he stole all of Rich's clothes and hid them away. As a result, Rich couldn't leave the restroom because he was too embarrassed. He was only rescued when the school ended and the security guard was going around to check. After that incident, Rich had transferred school due to being teased too much. So, learning from experience, this year's April Fool's Day, I tried to hide from my brother's sight. I went to school 30 minutes early, didn't hang around the places Loki used to visit, and even blocked his number. I was so hopeful that my obnoxious brother would just forget about my existence. However, it seems God didn't hear my prayer. No matter how hard I tried, I still couldn't escape from being his target. At lunchtime, I was putting the sandwich in my mouth when suddenly, a spicy sensation tore my throat. My face was hot and sweat was helplessly pouring out. Desperately, I shouted for everyone's help. At that moment, Loki appeared out of nowhere with a smug look. Happy April Fool's Day! You think you can escape from me, sis? Tears and snot started to flow from my eyes and nose. I hurriedly grabbed the Coke bottle on the table to drink, but when I just unscrewed the cap of the bottle, the Coke violently shot up, making my whole body drenched. <laughs> you look so funny! That embarrassing scene was seen by everyone around us. They gleefully laughed and filmed my pathetic state. Soon later, I had to change into my gym uniform to continue my day. If you thought that was all that happened on April Fool's Day, it's not. 
Loki continued to celebrate his national day with more sinister pranks. However, the next victim wasn't me, but someone else, a very special person. That afternoon, Loki and I attended a math class together. Seeing him laugh and chat happily with his friends made me very upset. At that moment, from outside the door, a young teacher with messy clothes entered. She clumsily adjusted her outfit and cheerfully introduced herself to us. Oh, hi everyone. I'm sorry for being late. I'm Evan George. And I'll be teaching for Mr. Connor today. Before Miss Josh could finish, Loki interrupted. You look like a chicken. His words made the whole class burst into laughter, and Miss Josh's face turned red with embarrassment. Shut up! Stop making trouble! Loki didn't say anything but just replied to me with a smirk. Looking at his face, I sensed that something bad was about to happen. And indeed, Miss George was unable to write anything on the board. Even though she pressed so hard, she broke. All the chalks, still not a single line appeared. When she frantically wiped the board with a wet cloth, it suddenly foamed up. Oh. Who put soap on the board? While everyone in the class was laughing again at her nervous face, I found her so pitiful. Miss, please use the projector. We can project the formulas on it. Right, that's a great idea. She happily told me, then quickly turned on the projector. Loki leaned close to my ear and spoke in a mocking voice. Right, that's a great idea. Having said that, he still put on his usual sly grin, a sinister sign that foreshadowed all the troubles that were about to come. What are you planning again? Well, I've just changed the position of a few keys. Sure enough, when Miss George was typing on the keyboard, she became so frustrated because she couldn't type a single meaningful word. The letters were all messed up. Can you just hurry up? When can we start class? Some boys began to join my brother and tease the poor substitute teacher. Under the heavy pressure, she postponed the class and hurriedly left in embarrassment. Seeing her poor appearance, I quickly ran after her. Miss, are you all right? I'm fine, but it seems like I'm not fit to be a teacher. I'm sorry for my brother's stupid pranks. He's always like that and driving people crazy. But the other students don't seem to like me either. Come on, don't let him put you off. Believe me, you can do it. After regaining her composure, Miss Josh took a deep breath and returned to the classroom. It was great to see that she looked slightly better. About 30 minutes later, when the class was peaceful, the fire alarm suddenly rang. Fire! Run! Loki stood up and shouted, then repeatedly gestured to everyone in the class to leave. Another stupid prank again? I got up angrily and pushed his arm down. Stop it, Loki! Grow up and stop being a joke! Some boys even agreed. That's right, dude. We have enough fun. Let her teach. Yeah, man, simmer down. Even Miss George frowned in anger and threatened to send him to her office if he continued to interrupt the class. But I didn't do this. Uh-huh. Stop lying. Although my brother tried to explain, no one believed him. But just a few minutes later, smoke from the doorways began to spread into the classroom, followed by a loudspeaker announcement from the principal, ordering everyone to leave the building immediately. At that point, we all panicked and tried to escape. Miss George hurriedly guided everyone to the safe exit as smoke and fire filled the whole building. I was about to run when suddenly, I heard a cry for help. It was Loki's. His leg was being stuck under a large wall. Layla, help me! I tried to push the wall off, but it was too heavy for me. Seeing the fire slowly spreading, I was so scared that I cried helplessly. At that moment, Miss George appeared, signaling to me that when she counted to three, we would lift the wall together so Loki could crawl out. Thank God, we were successful. After my brother got out, the three of us quickly left the building. Fortunately, Loki only suffered minor injuries to his leg. But after that incident, he learned a life lesson for himself. If he didn't pull pranks on others all the time, his alarm could have been trusted. Everyone could have gotten out sooner. He wouldn't have been trapped under a wall and risked both his life and mine. A few weeks later, everything was back to normal. We started going back to school, and the first thing my brother did was apologize to Miss George. <laughs> Now he's more grown up and no longer continues his outrageous pranks.